sometimes children get convulsions without fever. And there are many types. One is called grand mal epilepsy. What is grand mal epilepsy? Well, grand mal epilepsy is actually a term that's uh, it's not very clear. It used to be in the in the olden days. It used to be grand mal and petit mal. Today, these terms are used uh, incorrectly often. Uh, what people usually mean by grand mal is a generalized tonic-clonic convulsion, which basically the tonic means increased tone or just stiffening, and clonic is basically shaking back and forth. Um, and when you have that uh, in your arms and your legs, it would be called generalized tonic-clonic convulsions. Uh, can kids have just <coughs> one episode and not have the rest of their life? Sure. So an unprovoked seizure, if you just have one seizure, the chances of ha you actually have a better chance of not having another seizure uh, than you would have another seizure. And that's one of the reasons why we usually don't treat a first seizure. Uh, unless there's you know other particular reasons to do so. The habit is to wait to get a second or a third before you treat. <laughs> right. Currently, the definition of epilepsy are two unprovoked seizures, and the reason for that is from studies that have shown that having one seizure uh, doesn't necessarily mean you will have another one, and by treating it, uh, doesn't necessarily prevent a, a future epilepsy or benefit the person in any way. And if you get a seizure uh, and you sell the kids, what would you recommend parents to <clears throat> do if they saw a seizure for the first time? So if you saw a seizure for the first time, the first thing to do is not panic. Uh, it, I, I can understand it's definitely very scary to see your child having a seizure, especially the first time. Um, but the most important thing is to just lay them down, usually on their sides, so that if they were to, uh, to throw up, they wouldn't, they wouldn't swallow, it would go out the side of their mouth. Uh, very important is not to put anything in the mouth. A lot of times we watch movies of epilepsy, and they're always telling you to stick something in the mouth, that you can't swallow the tongue. Fortunately, your tongue is tied down to the bottom of your mouth, and you can't swallow your tongue. It's just not possible. So it's dangerous to put anything in the mouth. So that's something we always remind parents not to do. And just putting a soft pillow under their head so that if they are banging around, they're not going to hurt themselves. And waiting patiently. And then the most important thing is to look at your watch. A watch with a second hand, and try to find out exactly when it started, and time it. Because most seizures should end on their own within a minute or two. If they don't, and they start going along with three, four, even five minutes, that's when you need to be concerned that they won't stop on their own and would need medication to stop on their own. Um, and, you know, by that point, for sure, you'd be calling uh, 911 or getting, you know, emergency medical care. What are the, usually the causes of seizures like that? Well, the causes of seizures vary uh, depending on the age and depending on the situation. Uh, for example, there are some seizure types which are very benign, uh, which happen in certain age groups, and by being... Well, the nursery, so that seizures just from a low blood sugar, is that sure? Yeah, sure. There, there are metabolic issues that can cause seizures, such is as low sugar. Of, this thing called calcium can be low, is that sure? Yeah, that's very rare, but that does happen as well. It's extremely rare, thank God. Uh, years ago, some people would give milk, regular container milk, to baby, and they would sometimes get a seizure, because the phosphorus was so high, right. take out the calcium, and that could, it's rare, that's why we don't use container milk, one of the reasons. Right, okay. one of the reasons. One yeah. of the reasons, also that they keep, you know, the following the makers going. Sure. Uh, but as they get out of the newborn period, the, the farther away, then there, there could be some other reasons for seizures, is that true? Yeah, so some, so like I said, they could, it, it, the first thing that we do is look at the age group and look at the developmental status of the child, uh, whether this child is an otherwise normal child or whether he, you know, and how old he is, and that can help us decide why the child is having a seizure. Also, one of the major things to think about is what type of seizure the child had. Uh, it, for example, if it was a focal seizure, it would mean it was on only one side of the body, one part of the body, and that usually indicates uh, a, a single area in the brain that may be abnormal that may be causing the seizures. While it was, uh, while it started as a generalized event, meaning that it was a whole body that was shaking, uh, that sometimes can mean that it's, uh, it's a different type of problem. Uh, but if it's one-sided and it keeps happening one-sided and the body is very weak, there's some indication of the opposite side of the head, there could be something wrong? Exactly. The right side of your brain uh, causes uh, movement of the left side of the body and the left side of the right side of the body. And basically, uh, so for example, someone had shaking on, the, in, on their right arm, then we would know that that was probably being caused by the left uh, area of the brain that controls the arm. And if that were the case, uh, we would most likely get an MRI uh, to check and look if there's anything in the brain that needs to be taken care of. 
Uh, but again, we wouldn't even necessarily always have to do that because if, for example, we have an EEG that shows us a very specific pattern uh, of epilepsy that we know the cause of it, then we wouldn't need to do an MRI. Okay, but there was another type you alluded to quickly, pedimel. What does pedimel mean? Right, so pedimel, again, one of those words that we try not to use anymore because it's often uh, used incorrectly or misconstrued, but that has been, um, in the past, has been used to mean uh, staring spells, or just a child is staring, where he can be talking to you and then all of a sudden will just, you know, stop for a brief time like I just did, and that could be a seizure in itself. Um, at t the most common type of that in young children is called absence epilepsy today is what we call it. Um, and basically the child can have very, very brief that aren't even noticed for a long time where they're having a seizure and they're not able to respond to the name or, or, or respond to the environment. Um, if you do make a diagnosis of seizures and it happens more than one time, what is the approach in terms of treatment? So that's going to depend on the type of seizure. So we'll, we'll get an EEG and if necessary an MRI and we'll look at the different types of the seizures and how often they're occurring and that'll help us decide which medication to use. We'll often talk with the parents about the various medications because there are a lot of medications out there now and each medication has different um, different effects on the, on, on the brain and different side effects that we discuss with the parents and we try to work together with depending on the child. For example, in girls we might use a different medication than we would in boys uh, and in teenagers different than in younger children as well. Uh, the so-called uh, absence for blah, 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 petty mal epilepsy. Yes. Is there any age group that's more apt to happen than another age group? Sure. The, the, the absence epilepsy usually happens in the young child, uh, in school-aged children. Uh, the childhood absence epilepsy usually go away by the teenage years, while juvenile absence epilepsy starts in, the t in around, you know, uh, 11, 12 years old. And those are also associated with other types of seizures as well. As well as a childhood absence. Are there some things that could set up a seizure? Some people say that video games that some kids could do it. A yeah. wallpaper, very busy or stressed. Is that true? Yeah, a lot of people know about that because it's uh, it's interesting to know about, but it, it is very very rare. Uh, but we, you know, there there are, for example, in Japan is where this really became full blown. They had a video game system that and 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 cartoons that. Uh, flash at a certain frequency that can trigger seizures, but that's really in children that are prone to it, um, not in any child. If your child is prone to what's called um, a, a photostimulus epilepsy, uh, then you'd have to be careful from those things. Luckily in America, the way the TVs are made, we usually don't have that problem. But, it, but it's something you have to think about. But it can, and even uh, an interesting uh, way that that happens sometimes is when you're driving in the car and the sun flashes through the trees quickly. If you happen to be driving at an exact frequency and the trees are spaced properly, you can actually trigger a seizure in someone who's prone to seizures like that. Sometimes you get, you can't control the seizures, they just go on and on and on and get many a day. You ever have a situation like that? Sure. Um, and like I said, most seizures will end by, will stop on their own, but some seizures don't, and we would call that status epilepticus. <clears throat> if the seizure's lasting, the definition varies. It used to be an hour, then half an hour. Now they even say more than five minutes. Uh, then you'd really need to use medication and treat it because then it can start causing uh, damage to the brain and changes in the brain um, and may not stop on its own without the medication. And even if you have frequent seizures without return to baseline in between, that would be considered status epilepticus as well. Can an infection bring on a seizure? Yeah, different, vi uh, different viruses and bacteria can, can cause it. Um, and it can be done in different ways. Sometimes you have an encephalitis where you actually have inflammation of the brain, which is all that word means. Um, and that can be caused by a virus or a bacteria. And then sometimes, even after the virus is gone, uh, when your body is fighting the infection, it can leave some proteins and, 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 and the, the immune system can, can actually get confused in a sense and, and it start attacking the brain as well and causing seizures. Thank you very much.